Hello and welcome to Supercharged episode 192. This is Adam Dodges. I'm Adam Dodges. I'm Tommy Hutton, I think. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, all over the place today. I hope it's episode 192 and I didn't screw that up again. I hope you're who you are and I am who I am. Yeah, I think we got that right eventually. Or <laughs> exactly. But the... Uh, uh, when we were doing episode one eight one ninety, I think I said one eighty nine, <gasps> and I had to dub it over, you but I didn't in every spot. Monster. Yeah, and but last week I think it was one ninety one, and this week is one ninety two. It's hard because I don't name the files in the same way, so I always think I have it right, and then I realize, oh shoot, I forgot, and we just started recording. Um, but behind the scenes, look, uh, I added a, a rotating shot to our video this week, nice. so that I don't have to press the buttons. Although I've started, I've, I'm evolving this process. Eventually we're going to have a finite process that we just use until I get bored with it, I guess, and change it again. But um, but with Awkward, we've been auto-rotating the shots every few seconds or, or at a set interval, basically, so that everyone gets on screen and I don't have to constantly be like, push, 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 this is who we're talking about. But as you can see now, if you're watching, um, it also includes a two-up of Tommy and I in this episode. <laughs> Because uh, we only have two shots, so it's kind of boring if it's fading between two of us. Um, for those of you who haven't watched the video episodes, though, we often do add like extra stuff to them. It's not just you're not, you don't just get to look at how beautiful we are and how awkward I am. And no, don't tell. We got to sell oh, this. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah they, they no. can be disappointed once they see what we actually That's look true. like. That's exactly right. But the uh, it, it's not just about that. It's about uh, I mean, we we try to. Um, add a little bit of extra visual stuff and not everybody's going like if you're driving your car and listening to the podcast you're not gonna listen to the you're not gonna watch the video and if you are unless then you're please a really don't. irresponsible driver yeah but the uh if, if you are if you're hanging out or whatever check out the video a lot of the times we talk about stuff that we can't show you and so i wanted to do the video for that reason but we're also going to probably start breaking down things into segments or whatever um right now it's just a little bit more of an experiment but uh, support us in watching it. it. We at least get some ad revenue out of YouTube, I think, uh, when that happens. It's not much, but it's something. Um, I, I finally got them to pay me after three years, which wasn't for much because I think I got a bunch of money from like the auto blow non-review oh, that yeah. I did that so, for some reason blew up and got like a million views. And I hope that's on your um, gravestone or tombstone. It's fine with me if it is, but I'm getting cremated, <laughs> so they'll have to engrave it into a... I hope it's on your urn. Yeah. Or I hope your urn is an auto blow, too. That, you know what? That is the right idea. There you go. Um, so that is, <laughs> that's, um, you know, I, I, I think I made a couple hundred dollars off of that, which it should have been a lot more, but it, because it's, you know, inappropriate or whatever, I don't think a lot of ads ran on it. I'm surprised they allowed, that they allowed those NSFW ones to be monetized. I, I think it just got monetized, and it, this was so long ago by you know YouTube scandal ad <laughs> scandal standards yeah. that um, I think it went under the radar for a while, and no one was like, "Hey, this isn't appropriate." And so, you know, the soap companies or whatever, whoever advertises on YouTube, I have read because I don't I actually kind of liked some of the ads on YouTube, but it kept playing the same ones over and over and over again, and so that's what got me to subscribe to YouTube Red was because I got sick of having to watch the same three minute ad because eventually it does make you watch it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for when you're watching, like, seven-minute videos, it's that's, like, almost half the video. Mm -hmm. It's not... I don't want... I, and I'm like, I watched the ad. In some cases, I actually thought it was... I, I found something that was interesting, so I had no problem with it. I just didn't want to watch it again. It's like, if you know I watched the whole thing and you do know that, YouTube, then don't make me watch the same <laughs> thing again. Maybe that's why they want to torture you until yeah. you pay them. Yeah, I mean, like... It, or, or at least, like, if I don't click on it, then okay, maybe you have a cause to run it once in a while, or like maybe you run it again a week later to remind me. Mm -hmm. But if I, but like when I actually clicked on it, I would still. It's the same thing with like the targeted advertising. It's my yeah. biggest problem with it. Is it? It's the one thing Facebook gets really well. Or it does really <laughs> well. Like, and we're going to talk about Facebook today. Um, you probably know why, everyone. But because they're awesome. Yeah. They do nothing wrong. Exactly. It's exactly that reason, and. I think that I, I, I think that they, you know, when I, whenever I go on there, I usually am scrolling through the ads because I don't care what other people are posting most of the time. Sometimes it's interesting. Sometimes it's worthwhile. But most of the times people are complaining about a TV show or spoiling a TV show <laughs> or complaining about politics in an, a way that's not, I think, cool. <laughs> not, not a, it's uninformed or, you know, and I, I'm not always the most informed person 
ever. I try to keep up on as much stuff as possible, but there's a lot to keep up on these days. So, but I like, I don't go around talking like I'm informed. I make sure I preface my statements with like, I don't always know everything just like no one does. And I, I'm trying to be as accurate as I can be. Um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. But I don't like Facebook because everyone's just like, this person's an asshole, that person's an asshole. I'm like, okay, well, so a lot of the, th- there's a guy who posted, um, let me know about, about how, you remember that dog that died on a United flight yes, last week? Yes, being checked in the luggage. Yeah, that was put in the overhead, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Um, and died, and which had never been put in the overhead department, uh, compartment. Um, anyway, a friend of mine and Richard's posted, like, I don't understand why people travel with dogs and then was given like several reasons why that actually has to happen sometimes. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, like we don't put babies in the overhead compartment because they're human. But we should. It's not, you, sometimes, you, you know, you, I definitely can't say I wouldn't want to uh, remove the baby from the plane. But <laughs> because I'm not a monster, I, yeah. you know, don't do that. It's it's, kind of you. You have to, you have to, other people's problems are your problems too, whether you like it or not. Um, and, you don't have to like it, but you should be okay with it because we're better if we're helping each other than we are if we're just being selfish and ignoring each other. We don't get anywhere by, you know, by isolation. So blah, blah, blah. The, the point being he um, very aggressive about the dog, hmm. about like not having dogs on planes or animals on planes for any reason whatsoever, would not look outside of his own perspective on this one for some reason was being very stubborn even though he would like agree with these singular points but then be like and then yeah, he like minutes later say i don't get it yeah um so people are like that on facebook and it, it is what it is it's not for me is all i'm saying um so uh i guess i guess with that in mind i don't know i don't know exactly the, tra- the trajectory on which we got here if i forgot something along the way but we should probably talk about cambridge analytica let's do two quick things first then we can jump into that so okay oh yeah we have to we have to yeah. say fuck you agit pie yes uh we're so gonna do that every week now agit pie i just want to share some things uh he basically mentioned um last month he issued a report saying that the broadband deployment across the u.s is really on the right track finally because of the repeal of net neutrality. Sure is. The challenge is that hasn't gone into effect yet. It's still not officially scheduled, although it's rumored to take place at some point in April. Mm -hmm. So it's impressive that the idea of repealing it has already spurred innovation and broadband, which has obviously stalled dramatically across the u.s that's the magic of this administration is that best part are the four uh, decide yeah the best part the four examples that he listed uh which i believe are at&t verizon frontier and alaska communications uh three of those four Mm. were already planned under the obama administration when net neutrality rules were in play so Bravo, they're so good that people predicted Ajapai yeah. would take over and repeal it. That's why they invested. So, good job, Ajapai. Yes. Fuck you. We'll be back next week with another update on why um, net neutrality is still in a, a major issue and um, why Ajapai is an asshole. So, some other bad things that happened in tech. Uh, the Cloud <laughs> Act. Yeah, let's make this a downer. This yeah, week. this will be a, fun. We had a happy episode last week. Exactly. We can't, we can't do that again. If it's raining outside in LA. It means it's the end mm-hmm. of the world. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's just keep going down. So, the Cloud Act, which has a really great acronym, <laughs> it is the mm-hmm. Clarifying Lawful Overseas Use of Data Act or the cloud act because it definitely like if you were talking about cloud data then we definitely need an acronym to add on to that because it's not clear it really isn't so with that basically it's a response to disputes between microsoft and other giant service providers and the us doj which began (laughs) in 2016 basically microsoft won a victory in federal court that allowed for them to deny the Department of Justice access to data on servers that were overseas. So even though it is a U.S. company, servers that are physically outside of U.S. territory fall under the jurisdiction of that country's laws. This basically would allow for the U.S. to circumvent uh, basically the uh, sovereignty of that country. And as long as the U.S.-based company is the one they're dealing with, they can override that and get permission basically very loosely from that country without going through a treaty, uh, essentially making it easy to get data. Now, I understand that there are certain things related to defense or to stopping terrorist attacks that I understand that. The yeah, challenge and there are this, definitely instances in which yeah. this does make sense. So it's, we, we, I, I don't want to give the impression yes. that 
um, there is no positive element to um, circumventing this. Mm -hmm. In many situations, there should, you know, there there is a, there are national security issues in which getting that data from servers in another country makes yeah. sense. Um, the problem is that broadly applied, it can uh, it can be used to enforce insane parts of copyright law, yeah. for example. I mean, if you look at a lot of the work the EFF has done, you can see instances yeah. in which they've been able to protect fair use cases Completely. or uh, one, ones that, uh, I mean, what was that one with Ariel, the, the Give Me the Mermaid or something it's called, that video? Yeah, yeah. That, I think that's a, a good example to look at in terms of uh, of something that the EFF protected and was able to be protected by moving to off, uh, offshore servers. Obviously, national security is more important than someone's rights to use Ariel to create a criticism of Disney. Yeah. But there's, you know, that doesn't mean that you can't have both. Yeah. So the real challenge that comes from this is, yeah, EFF is very against this. First of all, it's being shoved through an omnibus spending mm -hmm. bill, which is not a security bill. This is not being openly debated. It actually has wide bipartisan support, which is complete bullshit. Because most people don't even read the bills that they, they pass. The reason mm. that I'm really going it's very sloppily written and clearly leaning on behalf of the national security side and not any kind of civil liberties. So, the well, I mean, it, it is a good it is a good mix for bipartisan support in a, in the sense that um, it, the Democrats can sell it as something that is protecting people and the Republicans can sell it to the businesses. Yeah. And on top of it, Democrats have always rolled over when it comes to like national security and the idea of like big government as opposed like the and they roll over on a lot of stuff well like especially with diane feinstein who i wish would just go away uh she's been uh, running for or not running she's well, like, technically yes running because she's mm -hmm. been in office for a very long time and she should just mm -hmm. retire she's incredibly hawkish and she's a giant supporter of the giant you know internal intelligence machine that we have which you know after the Snowden revelation show that there is a lot of liberties being violated by the uh intelligence agencies of the u.s so mm -hmm. this gives them sweeping powers to essentially collect overseas data on people without notifying you so this is a very hastily written bill and it basically gives them wide powers with almost no need for notification and almost zero recourse for appeal there's a very light appeal mm -hmm. process and uh, it likely will have very little oversight so yeah. for me i'm open to law enforcement being able to do their jobs but they need to be able to follow the rule of law and protect people's rights Mm -hmm. Just giving someone blank access to a server just because it happens to be overseas is bad form. Just like giving them access to anything. They should have to prove through a court of law that there is probable cause. Yeah. And it, and it sucks to support a bill. I, I mean, it's, I'm sorry. It sucks to not support a bill that is trying, that, that looks like it's in the interest of national security. But yeah. this is how we get shit like the Patriot Act. Yep. And Oof. it's just like you, it, it I, I hate, you know, being negative about this sort of thing because I like I'm all for the government being able under the right in the right ways to gather data more easily with a national security issue because you don't always have time to go through tons and tons of red tape and uh, many, many people to get the information that you need. Um, and so in the right circumstances, which is easier to determine than uh i mean sorry, sorry not easy to determine at all um so that, i mean like that's a complicated issue and we're going to gloss over that one but when you have those um when you have like, like that's a complicated thing to figure out but it's still something that is very worth figuring out because we have citizens who are not uh being treated fairly uh we you you have civil liberties that end up being stepped on and eventually we all become complacent with this and so a lot of a lot of stuff that uh you know that that we end up getting used to i mean like I, I don't think people realize the amount of surveillance that is on us on a regular basis like you just kind of don't think about it but it's the government kind of has the ability to look at pretty much anything they want so if you are I mean, like, like th this is when we have to oppose things because once they go through, it's much harder to get rid of them. It should be much easier to get rid of a law than it should to make a law. I think I, I think it should be harder to pass it. Yeah. Because because then if we can get rid of them, then you know the people can vote on getting rid of them, and then you really have to make a good law, otherwise it will get repealed. I would at least be interested in trying that.
I think even making people read the bills. Uh, there was a thing that Rand Paul tried to introduce that would basically make people. Uh, it's pretty funny. It would basically you have make to take a quiz on it. Or something. It would basically make everybody uh, who voted uh, sign an affidavit that actually read the text they were voting on, mm-hmm. and there were three ways to do it. You actually had every bill would be read in its entirety on the floor, and you'd be mm-hmm. present for that entire thing, or you had to verify by signing an affidavit that you were you read it yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are the two ways: you had to either be present during the reading or read it on your own. And people did not vote for it because they said it was a time waster. But when you That's look at insane, when you look Why at how is it a time waster if they have to waste that time I, anyway? No, it's so stupid. Uh, and I and the thing about Rand Paul is the Paul family. Yes, they're crazy. Ron Paul's nuts. But what I respect them for is that Ron Paul and Rand Paul, I would say Ron more so than Rand, because I think Rand threw a lot of what he believed under the bus to run for president. Mm. But Ron Paul, but I he still he still calls bullshit on a lot of stuff. He does. I mean, like, yeah. You got to give him credit for so, what no, he does yeah. do. So I give that Paul family credit for actually doing what they're elected to do and represent their constituents. Mm. Um, Ron Paul, especially that guy is nuts on a lot of things. But there are some things I respect him for because he sticks by his beliefs. He mm-hmm. is willing to throw mud in the eye of any kind of um, political... Um, I see him and Bernie Sanders in the same camp where they don't care about aligning with the party. They mm-hmm. vote what they believe and they stick by it and justify it. And they're willing to work across the aisle. You know, you got Barney Frank and Ron Paul. Barney Frank was one of the most liberal people in Congress. You have the two of them working on bills together because they happen to agree on stuff. And it wasn't anathema mm-hmm. to the political system for them to work together on stuff when they yeah. agreed. So with Ron Paul, he really... Um, and so we need more people like that, not yeah. necessarily with any particular belief system, but people that are like, we're not going to we're not gonna, yeah. bro up and, and do whatever the party tells us yes, to do. Yes, yeah, our, jo- our job is to our constituents and not to the party as a whole. Yeah. Now, granted, that's Imagine why... if we had just like 10 more of those people in Congress, yeah. that, that would actually... It could do something. I think, start to spread a bit more people would actually see it the it's challenge hard is to hear from these people. that ron paul is an exception because people like that don't typically get reelected, and mm-hmm. ron paul never got far in his bid to run for president because of that because the party stifled him mm-hmm. Rand paul i think had to sell out a bit and kind of marginalize some of his views to uh get further in the process but again the guy is I have more respect for him than i do other people on that side of the aisle because he again he has a belief system and sticks by it which is a lot more to be said for than what the other guys are doing. Anyway, yes, so we'll see what happens with the Cloud Act. Yeah. I'm not we, holding my breath. We will. We will see. Uh, and then we also have the crash in Tempe, Arizona. Oh, yeah. So Uber had a self-driving car that killed someone on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a uh, self-driving car in Arizona, and Arizona is a hotbed for self-driving action because right now... Uh, There's a lot of road. There's a lot of road, and Arizona wanted to lure uh, tech investment, so they basically cleared the way of reg- in terms of regulation over cars. So uh, self-driving cars were welcomed, and so every company flocked there. There have been a lot of issues and hurdles of the different cities throwing up roadblocks, uh, not literal roadblocks, but figurative roadblocks, to self-driving cars. Uh, Arizona was a perfect spot. So they are all over the roads in Arizona. And honestly, I think this was only a matter of time before this happened. There was always going to be a first person that got killed with a self-driving car. What mm. happened? Uh, the police released footage yesterday. I just wish it wasn't so soon. It's um, the footage is really haunting. Uh, they they it cuts the moment right before impact. So you see it like the millisecond before um, impact. But basically, a woman was crossing the road at night, not any pedestrian area. Or at a crosswalk. It was not well lit. And you see her split second before the car hits her. She was uh, a woman in her 40s was crossing the road with a bike. The car uh, slowed down, but it was too late. She flew back. She was taken to a hospital for her injuries and she died. Mm -hmm. The car did have a person in the car whose job it was to take over in case the car malfunctioned. Mm -hmm. Because there was a steering wheel and a brake override system. But it's very clear when you watch the video, because the video shows both perspectives, the uh, dash cam looking out on the road and the cam inside looking at the driver, uh, or driver in quotes. Mm. I guess you could say passenger. (laughs) Um, She was very clearly on a cell phone or looking down a lot. Mm -hmm. But again, that's not necessarily her fault on the level of if you're in a self-driving car for four hours, Mm -hmm. it's going to probably get pretty boring because the car is doing all the work for you. Which car was this? It was a Volvo uh, in the Uber fleet of self-driving cars. 
So do you know whose system it was running? Um, I'm sure we can find out. I, I don't know why I didn't think about that until now, but I, I'm curious if it's like, you know, if it, Google's been working on this so, for so long, so it'd be more disappointing to me if, uh, what, what, what is their thing called that I was confused about last week? Their what? Or a couple weeks ago, um, the company, Google's sub company. Oh, Waymo. Waymo, yeah. If, if, if like, if it was a Waymo car that Uber is using, I don't, I, I really don't know enough about all the self-driving car business mechanics to know who's doing what but i would be disappointed if it was waymo just because it's no i mean it's uber uber has their own stuff they have their own stuff yeah okay yeah yeah so well, that i mean that just seems like it might be a feature of uber a day it's past that's left over from the kalanick day <laughs> yeah it wouldn't surprise me i mean who did it hit that's really the important yeah question exactly. it wouldn't be an uber customer she's on a bike you know mm. um so for, for legal purposes that was a joke yeah that was a very bad joke um the I think the challenge is that we always knew this would happen. It's very unfortunate. And the hard part I think they are dealing with this now is how to move forward. Um, statistically speaking, self-driving cars are safer than people. And think about how many times people have died being hit by cars that are driven by human beings. I mean, I could when I used to drive to work every day, I could, t- I could give you an example daily. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, would see it at 9.30 a.m. on the 134 every day day yeah every weekday and especially as a day that's raining that's when accidents skyrocket because people can't drive in the mm-hmm. rain in los angeles oh yeah uh yeah, i can't imagine how many bodies are scattered around the highway right now so it's it's sad uh and very it's, sad it's very it's, tragic it's, it's and it's it's stupid too because it's just it's not the, you know what are, it, accidents happen i just feel like people could pay attention more i just so many people just are not paying attention you're in a car you, so you can kill people in a car so he, How do you not know that? So here's the real challenge, I think, that they're facing now. The question mm-hmm. is, why didn't see this woman? And if you have the stomach for it, I would encourage you to watch this video. It is haunting, but it does raise a very good point. Mm-hmm. People watching the video say, well, she came out of nowhere. And while the video does back that up on some level, she didn't magically materialize on the road in front of the car. She was crossing. And any pedestrian mm-hmm. crossing at a dark... Like, first of all, a camera is not going to pick up the great lighting that you're seeing. You're seeing... Mm-hmm. from a dashboard of a car with headlights. It I doesn't mean, pull up the lighting of what it actually looks like from the visibility of a car or from a person. It's definitely something you want self-driving cars to be better at than yes, humans, but absolutely. I would be really curious, like, in that exact situation, who would do better, the robot or the human? That's a good question. And that's what people are asking, is that why didn't the car pick it up? Because clearly this isn't mm-hmm. the first instance of someone walking in front of a car at night. Mm-hmm. That's got to be something they're testing for. The big challenge is people now want to see the data the car had. What were the sensors picking up? And how did it did the detector? Like, was something broken? Was there an issue with its sensors? Or if there aren't sensors that can pick up people at night, why the hell not? So those are the questions that I think will be answered in the next couple of days now that we have this footage. And it was not Uber, but rather the uh, police in Tempe, Arizona that released it. I mean, I the thing is, Cost is obviously an issue with um, putting together fancy schmancy self-driving car technology. But considering that we're talking about like a life and death thing here and that the future of this technology depends on it being far more perfect than anyone should. I mean, it'll get pushed through because businesses want Mm -hmm. it. And, uh, you know, when that cars are as much of a problem as they are, I think, because, uh, you know, it, it started off with. Oh, these are dangerous vehicles, and people were concerned. But then the car companies are just like, "Oh, well, they're just uneducated. We they need to be taught yeah. and um, on on how to be safe pedestrians. It's the pedestrians' fault the cars are hitting them." Um, <laughs> I mean, so that, this is the first major instance. Here we are. Yeah, where a self-driving car may actually be at fault, where every other mm-hmm. instance was other people running into the car. Yeah, and it's I, like as much as I want Uber to be better with this new CEO, and I think that he's he seems great. I should say he seems great. I don't know enough to really form an opinion beyond scenes. Not haven't met the guy. I haven't talked to him. Have only watched a few interviews. But he, uh, I, I want them to be better uh, because of that. But he's also coming into a company that has had a toxic leadership yeah. in it for its entire existence and a lot of blame and you know never mm. responsible to build there's a lot of blame and yeah. fingers pointing you can't bring in a new leader and expect everybody else to start working differently under him immediately mm-hmm. so there are going to be things that are problematic that that guy's not going to know about coming in and i i feel for him he's got a tough job um but you know like this 
it, it, I don't necessarily attribute the failure to him. Like in a year or two, then then you got to wonder. But um, but yeah, it's it's disappointing though because you know it, it the self driving car should work better, and mm-hmm. they and this one even may work better than a person. But it's really hard to determine that after the fact with a limited amount of video. But we but you know if anyone's cutting costs, which is what I was going to say when when I uh, why I was prefacing this my usual. I don't mean to shit on blank, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> um, it, I, I, I would, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me, old Uber anyway, wouldn't surprise me if they were trying to cut costs as much as possible rather than doing the safest thing. Well, yeah, they're, and, they're, they, they, yeah they were not making money. Yeah, and Canon makes amazing sensors that can very, you could see better in the dark than anybody. Also, you know, we have infrared. Um, they're, they're just... There, there are all sorts of. I mean, Canon sensors like I think twenty K to, to just get the camera piece, um, and if you need multiples of those, it's obviously quite expensive. But this is the time to be spending that money, and if you can't spend that money, you should not have cars on the road. Yep. The end. So yeah, we'll see what happens from this. I'm guessing you are probably going to see some kind of, you know, giant campaign to prove that this is still safe. But for now, all cars have been pulled off the road. Um, Clearly, this is not going away, but I'm curious what kind of uh, hurdle this will be for them to get over yeah. and uh, and handle just to prove that it's safe. Is it is it just Uber that got pulled off the road? Because I saw something about Apple's cars driving around, which I thought they weren't even. I thought they just stopped I, doing I, that. I believe but... Ubers are off the road now, but because um, hmm. again, I don't think they've clarified whether it was a. It clearly wasn't human error because it, yeah, it, even if someone does something crazy like and runs out in front of a car, mm-hmm. the car should take all you know all attempts to save the person um but i think we're probably going to see more issues like this popping up unfortunately as you get cars out there but it, unless there's just like a giant massacre of people you know having an accident every year or so is probably going to be standard uh i'm really curious at what point we'll hit the trolley problem coming to reality mm-hmm. where you will have a car that ends up hitting a child on purpose to save a, the person in the car or to see, and I think we actually talked about this uh, in terms of the child versus the grandmother. Yeah, and uh, and and that uh, I, I, we had there's some sort of joke about BMW when we were discussing. Yes, because BMW made it clear that they prefer the person uh, in the car over the oh, right. pedestrian. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, you can just imagine then the person's asleep, or the you know sleep in the car, <laughs> like having like you know some nice music playing and uh, relaxing in a perfectly heated seat with the temperature controls you know perfectly massaging them and yeah. being amazing and just like plowing the people mm-hmm. and doing so in a way that does not wake them up that'll be a th- that'll be some sort of like a music video or uh, at like public service announcement at some point someone's going to feel like self-driving cars are massacring humans <laughs> and they're going to make they're going to make some sort of like you know some sort of sad song where you just see a BMW plowing through <laughs> streets of people and they'll, it's, and it's like Christmas and the and blood's going into the snow. I, I guarantee this is going to happen. I look forward to that. Yeah. So Uber, I kind of yeah. do. I, I look forward to watching it. I do not look forward to it um, making any waves. Unless, of course, that is it, it ends up being true. But I don't think... I mean, like, it ends up being a legit problem that we need to get these cars off the road because they're evil. Mm. But I don't really think that's going to happen. I, th- I think this technology is not thinking; it's processing, yeah. and it's this. It, it's going to take some fine tuning, but it is quite good already. Yeah, no, it's exactly. They've logged so many million miles and very mm-hmm. few incidents, and they've been able to capture all this data. Driving is not a simple task; it's complex. Being able to navigate yeah. roads, signs, pedestrians, objects—you know—so they've done mm-hmm. a great job. It just, it's yeah. The it only was- thing that bothers me about it, though, um, not the only thing. <laughs> One, the thing that bothered me about it yesterday was that uh, Tim Cook gave a statement about how this is like the hardest problem in AI to solve. I'm like, no, it's not. If it was the hardest problem to solve, there would be a lot of other problems that would have made this kind of progress by now. I mean, I, I think of the, of the language problems that I'm working on mm-hmm. um, that we talked about with Eugenia last week, which if you didn't watch, you should watch it. It's great. It is. Um, seriously, was, I, I don't mean to I didn't downplay any other episode we've ever done, but that was like the best thing ever for me. Um, but the, uh, nevertheless, it's, uh, I mean, like there, there are some language problems that are easier to solve and we have solved. And there are other language problems that are remarkably difficult to solve, which are the ones that I'm looking at 
and I'm not saying I'm going to figure it out. I hope I do. Um, but you know, I'm like one guy and I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm, I'm figuring some stuff out, but I, I think I look at that problem as like, no one knows how to solve that problem. No one has come close to figuring out how to, how to get a computer to actually naturally generate language. And I'm not even going that far. Like for, I'm not trying to get a computer to think in those terms, but I mean, I mean like, I, it, it bothers me that Apple, I, I imagine Tim Cook saying that to kind of puff up their efforts and not because he believes it, but it's, it also gives this idea that like, oh, that's the hard problem. And like, no, 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 <laughs> we have so much farther to go and so much more to do. And Apple should know that. Like, they, I, like I want to know that they know that there are bigger AI problems. There are other things in AI that are worth exploring. Um, and cars are not, you know, it's not like the, we're done when we get cars to drive themselves. So that bothered me a little bit. I think that's a fair reason but, to be bothered. But it's also, I mean, well, it's also like, of all the things we could be bothered by these days, it's, it really doesn't matter. It's just, um, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff around this car stuff. But speaking of things that are actually legitimately yeah, like Uber had significant. Yeah, like Uber had a bad week, and uh, you could mm. say that's bad, but then you could say Facebook might have had a worse week. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think even might have. I think we can say Facebook definitely had a worse week. Now, do you think the headlines are overwrought? Um... Yeah. I mean, th- th- this is. I, I haven't had this weird balance of feelings, opinions. I don't know uh, on this whole thing. Uh, just to recap really quickly, if you're not familiar with the whole Cambridge Analytica debacle, um, basically a lot of information was uh, was gathered from Facebook by. I, I, I think exploiting is too strong of a word, but we're going to use it for the time being. I, no, I think exploiting is perfectly valid in this case. Well, I'm going to explain why I don't think so in okay. a second. But, okay. the, uh, but, but the company exploited a, you know, the ability to get information out of Facebook that, uh, you know, that, that wasn't consensual. And that you know, if you're a software developer um, and you go into Facebook, and this was something that I have been harping on for years that and you know I, I i try to get people to be careful with facebook to not really use facebook i like i'm on it i have to use it for stuff but i don't you know i mean like i'm i'm very very careful about my usage with it and i don't go on very often no one seems to notice this which is really another uh thumbs up for facebook there that you know this is a platform that no one realizes you've left as long as you have an account on it because all they're doing is throwing their own voice out there and expecting to get a reaction, um, which, it, which is what it's for. You post and you want people to like it, and then other people go through and like your stuff. But they're not looking at it, really. I mean, sometimes they do. Sometimes you, you engage somebody because you piss them off. But this is a very negative view. Obviously, some good stuff happens on Facebook, too. Um, it's, been, it's been used to raise a lot of money for good causes, blah, blah, blah. But, cat you know, photos, too. Wh- what? Cat photos. Yes. But I mean, you you can just go to the catapi.com and, yeah. and and build your own <laughs> perfect cat. I mean, I've I've done that. I I'm not a cat person like Tommy, but um, but Denise is a cat person, so I built it into our task management app. That's sweet. So that uh, there's always a cat available if she needs it, um, because she's she's a cat person. Anyway, um, the uh, the, you can basically get a lot of information out of Facebook. If you're a developer and someone um, agrees to, if someone like pr- signs in to participate in a survey, for example, or signs up for your game, or down, da- or yeah, like what Disney uses character Facebook as OAuth. Which Disney character are you? Mm-hmm. And yeah. you use Facebook for authenticating that, so it can be shared or whatever. When you agree, you don't always know exactly what information you're giving out, and Facebook tells does a decent job these days of telling you pretty much what you are giving out, but it makes it very easy to just bypass it. And like when you're in a hurry or whatever, not realize, which is, um, I, I mean, I think at this point, it's your fault if you're doing that. Like you should pay attention for two seconds and look at it. Like they are, they can't really do much more than they're doing in, in the sense that they're telling you that. What they should do is not allow companies to take your friend list yeah. and information about people that you're friends with just because you authorize. There's no situation in which that's okay. And they've been doing this forever. And so when I say it, that, like, there are two the two beefs I have with the way this has been reported, and one of them, is, you know, when I say like a loophole in Facebook was exploited, and that being strong language, I'm saying I'm saying that because it's not really an exploit. It's been part of Facebook forever. It was just used in a way they didn't intend. 
I don't I necessarily agree with that either because this was a, I mean, like, remember uh, Farmville and who made that? Zynga, uh, Zynga. Zynga, yeah. I mean, like, Zynga was notorious for taking people's information uh, that, that didn't want it. Candy Crush did this too. I refused Candy Crush. I posted on Facebook several times, don't invite me to Candy Crush. I will block you because I don't want that shit mm-hmm. getting into my account. And I actually had signed up for it before I knew any of this stuff because everyone was talking about it. And I was like, okay, well, let's see what this is. It's not... I don't have to pay money to farm or whatever, so yeah. um, I guess I'll give it a shot. And then, I, and I wanted to, I just like to know kind of what people are into, so mm. I understand why they're into it, even yeah. if I don't care for it. <laughs> and and I realized it had been like sucking data out of my, it requested all the stuff, so I was just like, nope, block, no, no Candy Crush anything. And I would tell people not to invite me, but they just kept doing it. And I'm like, okay, you're not allowed to send me requests anymore. That's fair. So the uh, they've been doing this for a long time, and Facebook has been okay with it. It just has never been used for these means, yeah. and I don't think it's okay to say like this instance is wrong and this other instance is okay. It's not okay. Period. No one's consenting to giving their information up if they're on your friends list, and people don't. And like as many times as much as I've tried to tell people this is happening, uh, I mean like people either don't care or they just don't pay attention or don't realize it i mean like i only have so much reach so there and obviously there are a lot of people i i am not saying this to um because i can't but so to give some background to cambridge analytica is a brokerage firm uh they handle data they do a mm-hmm. thing called psychological ops or psyops which sounds super sketchy basically mm-hmm. they, they build very complex uh social and psychological overviews of people and use that as data which then when they have it on the scale of like 15 million users of Facebook, then they're able to have these really interesting profiles of people and that data can help something along the lines of sell a product or win an election. So Cambridge Analytica has basically um, been in the crosshairs for a giant, giant... um, I I don't want to say they they are corrupt, but they have basically been caught getting this data in shady ways, you could say. I, I mean, th- I think a good way to describe what uh, what they are is to say that Steve Bannon was part of this company, yes, oversaw the, a lot of what they were doing. Yeah. It should, w- however you feel about him is approximately how you should probably feel about what this company did. And so a lot of what they did was really co-opted by the, the right and by the uh, mm. alt-right especially. Yeah. But, and their logo is a fucking stock image, by the way. I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I know that one. Like, why did you, <laughs> I mean, I, I get it, you're lazy, but it's just kind of funny Like you well, can put like a little, like some lettering on it, on the brain or something. They're too busy, uh, uh, you know, psyoping to spend time <laughs> doing stupid graphics, you know, that. <laughs> so with them, they, they've been caught doing really sketchy stuff, including talking about like being able to bribe politicians and, you know, blackmail people. So the idea of, if you know someone's psychological profile, especially on the level of knowing them as well as their partner and they claim they can know you with like between 30 to 50 likes things that you identify as liking with those they can have a completely um a completely accurate and pretty deep view of who you are as a person and how to manipulate you which is from everything that i've seen not with their company but just generally i mean i think we we talked about this at one point Mm -hmm. it's really easy to profile someone with some straightforward question I, I actually i think we did a a show specifically about this i put the survey out there for people mm-hmm. i don't know if it's still up somewhere but um where i could you know where, where it was basically like showing what we could figure out about you from like four or five questions and also how we could predict exactly what you would answer mm-hmm. in a bunch of questions without you necessarily realizing it because it was rigged against you but you can't tell yeah unless you know what we're doing so that's the real Frustrations that the, the the company was really hijacked by the alt right. Mm. So much of the founder of the company is the one that was the whistleblower because he didn't like <laughs> the direction the company was going in. Good for him. And this really is blowing up in Facebook's lap because what happened was they got access to a ton of information from about 15 million Facebook users, and they didn't tell anyone. So Facebook knew this from the beginning, and what they did is they obviously began changing their policies because they knew this was a problem. But the challenge they ran into was they didn't disclose it to anyone. Mm -hmm. They didn't openly disclose it. And the hardest part is that they want to, they claim now. But this was done back in 2013 and 14. 
And even though those psychological traits were picked up then, that data is still valid because people don't really change that dramatically in life. Those profiles are still incredibly valid. And that's still a lot of data that can be used, which was used to elect Trump even. Um, it had a hand in helping the election because <coughs> they were able to cater to those 15 million people or sort of know, based on these people, they could also extrapolate out to saying, well, we have the data for 100 people that live in this town. Mm. We can, da- you know, we can align this to friends and other people. Yeah, uh, and it doesn't matter how you feel about Trump. It, for any candidate, this is unethical. Yeah, no, it really is. And this is clearly trying to hijack a system and really manipulate people. Uh, and so Facebook's role was they, whether wittingly or not, got data that most people probably would not be comfortable having shared shared out. Mm-hmm. And they knew about it and didn't do anything. They mm-hmm. did try to change their policies, but their policy was basically calling up companies and be like, hey, uh, that data you got, can you erase that? Mm-hmm. And the company could just be like, fuck you, we don't have to because it's no longer yours. Yeah. There is no legal recourse. So very rarely did companies ever comply. Well, Cambridge Analytica claimed they erased it, but then mm-hmm. journalists recently have seen the data. So clearly it wasn't erased. So Facebook, of course, was like, we're shocked they lied to us. Well, what recourse did they have? Did you, could you take? Nothing. They, you could say, I'm not erasing it, and Facebook could just be like, okay. So that's the problem. Is Facebook didn't disclose it. And I think right now they're really running into the issue of are they really valuing privacy? And it's even raising the question of their, of their model, mm-hmm. which Zuckerberg had to defend, saying, is it really makes sense for a company that you claim wants to take privacy seriously and respect its users? That's a free product that is using the very data people put in to sell them stuff. Mm-hmm. And his argument was interesting. I'm not a big Zuck fan, but... I, Although I, I think it's I think it's a little unfair that people are criticizing him for taking um, so long to I, I do think it's fair to criticize him for not saying anything at all well, for five days. It but, wasn't but it wasn't just five days. So the only reason they even came out with a statement between when they put the statement up online mm-hmm. and when he spoke. They should have just said he'll make a statement shortly. We need time to well, investigate. The like, only that's re- what should have the, happened. The problem was the only reason they made a statement was because the New York Times was gonna publish. That's the only yeah. reason why, because New York Times asked for a quote about the topic, yeah. and then they released the statement trying just, to be proactive. I just think that criticism just kind of misses the problem a lot, because it's not it, like, yeah, he needs to say something, but there are legitimate reasons for him taking his time. It's more of a concern that we didn't know about it. It's like, like criticize Facebook for not addressing it, not Mark Zuckerberg for not taking ownership of the problem. I mean, he's the company, though. He he represents it. He. I mean, no, he, I know, they, but it's yeah. like in place of that, it doesn't. Like, there's a more important thing we should be focusing on sure. first, and then you can do what. I, like, I don't care. And I, I, he's. Not, I don't. I don't trust the guy either. I could see the reason I could see other people getting upset was that he was sitting for five days. He mm-hmm. made no comment, and so his stock is taking a hit. So you okay. could even see the. No, I get it. It's no, just, I'm, so I'm saying is people that actually like Facebook are probably like, "Come mm-hmm. on, man, you need to defend the company because we invested yeah. in you. Why aren't you like?" I think it was from both sides. Uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is though, it's very convenient that hours after you know reaching out from the Times, the fact that Facebook began releasing statements about it it's like well you knew about this before but it's very convenient that now that you know we're going live with it you're actually coming clean they should have come clean with it from the very beginning um so now they're trying to say they're doing due diligence and investigating but in reality those people you might get pinged saying hey your information was shared but is it because you took a personality quiz or is it because a friend of yours did and you got sucked up in that data just because your friend shared information so that's where things stand the one thing about zuckberg that i did find interesting was you know, he said he was somewhat contrite and said that he didn't expect that he would be dealing with elections and fraud and all this stuff when he was inventing this in a dorm room. Uh, yeah, he probably didn't. Re- he probably didn't think about it at that point, but he's definitely thought about it since then because yeah. Facebook has been very, very active in politics yes. and wants to be. And they kind of have done it under the guise of we want more people to vote and whatever. Mm-hmm. But and, and and like tried to. It it felt it has felt like Facebook generally was trying to be bipartisan in their promotion of political stuff, but to say that they didn't think about any of this stuff, yeah, you know, it's very it's, disingenuous. Yeah, it's like it's like yeah, okay, fine, you probably didn't think about it. There's I I can believe that you didn't think about it back then. Yeah, naturally, but you we're no not idea. talking about that time. exactly. I mean, the clear this isn't a year ago when you found yeah. it. It's been around for a long enough yeah. time. And you moved the company in this yeah, direction, so exactly. you have thought about it. And the fact that his company has embedded in political campaigns and gave Trump and Hillary both mm. their own teams 
and Trump's team just happened to use it better. Like that's bullshit to say that you're not considering this. Like now, yeah, like, uh, you're making money hand and fist with these with any campaign. You don't yeah. care who you're helping elect. Yeah, and additionally, you're also you know buying into the two party system, or you're you're paying into the two party system. Or you're paying into whatever party system pays you. It's like yeah, if you got a third party candidate. I'm sure they'd be happy to let a Jill Stein and let a mm. you know a libertarian candidate. Yeah, pay but that's him. the thing is, no one gets a voice because there's not enough money. Yeah. and so if there we want to if if we want technology to be democratized Mm -hmm. and to support our democracy that we have you know not as much of as we once did perhaps for many reasons i'm not just talking about what's happened over the last year but you know gerrymandering is quite old for example there are a lot of things that are a problem and have been a problem for a long time but still still relevant yeah and still relevant um so if if you know facebook and google and all these companies are a force that can pretty much turn the tides of politics if it wanted to be completely fair to everybody and open up the platform in that way i mean obviously you got to charge a little bit here and there but if it offered this if it offered functionality not the manipulation stuff but like a platform for to reach people so that candidates who would normally not get the attention they get on tv can get on the internet which is where a lot of people are now um that could make a big difference in electing officials that actually represent the people that are voting. I mean, what the people want who can vote for them. The interesting too with him is that he brought that up about payment and he said he wanted Facebook to be free because he wanted Facebook to be universal. And Mm -hmm. a lot of countries people couldn't afford to pay, even if it's like a dollar a year or something to Facebook. Mm -hmm. So it has to be ad supported to make it more accessible, which yeah. Okay. Sure. You know, I buy that argument a little bit, but at the same day, like you make a lot of money, mm-hmm. and if you relied on being on subscriber based, then you're or either you know the freemium, which is, you know, you you get the product for free, but then you have advertisements, or you pay and you get the the ad free version. Mm-hmm. He said they you know they may look into that, which, you know, I get it. You're offering a platform that you're trying to make go universal and go global, and it has, but. The idea of would people pay for Facebook? Would that be enough to offset the ad revenue and actually no. make them? Yeah, in reality, I don't see that happening. And that's why TV took so long to get there. Yeah, because it doesn't. It doesn't. You make more money off the ads, but if the ads aren't actually like you know, eventually advertisers are like, okay, this isn't helping anymore. People are leaving. And eventually, the tide will turn because people want what they want, and companies need to get ahead of that rather than try to mm-hmm. push back. Like you can't change the the forward motion of technology the we we can't say no to smartphones we can't say no to the microsoft hololens we can't say no to ai these things are going to happen no matter how much pushback it's sometimes better to slow it down in some cases because we need time to do it ethically but the focus should be on making sure it's done ethically making sure that peop that that it helps people that it's not about causing problems for people but it's about solving them and that we do the best we can to always put everybody's better interest first. We're not going to get it right all the time, but you know, that, like this is we can mitigate the issues with technology that come up through lack of education, through a lack of um, actual just general good behavior. With you give technology to somebody who can see an ability to take power, and it can be corrupting because you, you, it's just how power seems to work. It is, but. Um, do you see Facebook's like? What do you think their next steps are? How, if you were advising them, what would you? If I was them? advising Facebook, I mean, I think a lot of the stuff. It, it's it's hard because I don't. I, what I would do, they wouldn't do. Um, but I would want Facebook to. I would want Facebook to open up its tools for um, to politicians broadly, so anyone could use them um, freely and easily, so that everybody has a voice. That it's they find a way, algorithmically speaking to promote things equally um, and that it's not the kind of system that can be gamed, but that it is, it is designed to be balanced. Mm -hmm. Um, But that doesn't obviously solve the, uh, you know, the, the data. I I think calling it like a leak or a breach, they're both bad words to (laughs) use. It's more of like a spill because it was just sitting there waiting for someone to (laughs) spill it. And it has been spilling for a long time. Yeah. Um, I mean, that might not be the best word either, but my point is that, you know, it's not, it's like, it's not a breach because nothing was breached. It was, it was, no one hacked into the system and took mm-hmm. it. It was there to be taken. And 
that has been known for a long time and someone just it's amazing that it took this long for someone to think to take advantage of it in this way it is um so that needs to be shut down like that should have been shut i've been saying that forever so it's that needs to go um there need the the privacy of the user the the user needs to understand exactly what's happening with their information and facebook has taken steps to make that better but it not in a way that I mean, there's so many privacy controls, it's almost overwhelming at this point. And no one goes in there. And that, to a large extent, is the user's fault because Facebook does remind you to do it and you should do it. And if you're not doing it, I, you know, it's like you can't really blame Facebook for that if you're not managing your privacy settings. But uh, why, why not set them all but, to private by default? Well, yeah, I mean, that they should, the privacy should be step one yeah so the, that's the that's the other problem is it's like you can't blame facebook for uh for the privacy settings you choose but you can blame facebook for kind of coercing you or making you not realize you're choosing privacy settings mm. that are not so private by default um and so i think I, I think they need to do that to protect people's data i think that there should i think they should stop claiming ownership of or, or usage rights of people's data to as much of an extent as they can, because obviously they do have to protect themselves if you're posting on their network and like they uh, show a picture of you to a friend or something, you, you don't, that, that should never be a case for a lawsuit. Yeah. Like there should be terms in which, you know, they can use the, your media, but it should be very strictly defined. Mm -hmm. There should be an overview, and I say this for every single, probably company, but definitely tech companies with end users. Every single legal document that someone has to agree to should have a very should be very short and summarized and clear yeah. and in human readable language. And you can have extra details or whatever to define it for court purposes that people can access. But there should be an accurate short version that people are going to be willing to read. You could make it read it to them because <laughs> there are literal plugins. You, you don't have to. Facebook could easily develop text to speech. Rand Paul would love that. He would. Yeah. The reading stuff. The reading stuff. Yeah. He doesn't like to read? No, the reading stuff, because that would help this bill. That was, I was, oh. Doing, I was doing, oh, right, right. I was doing I a callback. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, that would help. They should institute that in, in, in Congress as well. But I, I mean, I think there are, we, we could go on for a long time talking about the, way, the things Facebook could do to not be a piece <laughs> of shit. But uh, I think that would be a good starting point it for help. protecting data and allowing politicians equal, uh, an equal shake at things. But then also... You know, when it comes to buying advertisements, they shouldn't like that shouldn't be where the gate is, is you know, the floodgates open so easily. Mm -hmm. It should be a situation where if you um, if you're buying ads on Facebook, it should be reviewed more thoroughly, um, at least at least on based on certain criteria. They said actually they they did stop a, an attack on the most recent special election in Arkansas with our good friend Roy Moore. They said there's a giant surge in Macedonian companies and individuals buying ads mm. and they shut those down. So those not, we're not able to influence the elections. So. Yeah. I mean, I think if it's political in nature at all, if it, if, and, and we have algorithms can, that can detect this sufficiently, like as, as problematic as machine learning can be in its current implementation, um, it does a lot of things very well. Also, in, Macedonia should not be buying ads that support either political candidate in the yeah. US. Yeah. I mean, you're in Macedonia. Political money should come from America if it's for American politics. Like I, I'm, I am in no way a nationalist, but when we're talking about like national politics, there's, yeah. I can see no good reason to not prevent buying uh, from foreign influences buying into into that power unless we agree. become a world government and there are elections where you know someone could uh, where we're electing people in another country to be an ambassador to the United States or some, I don't know. Like, there, there might be situations down the line where that makes sense. When but the Illuminati controls here. us, that's when. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's troubling. I mean, um, you're saying we'll be alive long enough to let this happen if the self-driving cars don't just kill us all. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe they're a solution in some way. I'm really worried that this is the start of the Stephen King film Maximo Overdrive. I, you know, I haven't seen that. You should look it up. It is, uh, he does, says he does not remember making the film. It's the only film he's ever directed. He wrote and directed. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the only film he said he remembers just, he does not making because he was so high on cocaine the entire time. 
And when you watch it, you can see the results. I have a question for you on a lighter, a lighter note since we got to wrap up. And yes. uh, we're talking about Stephen King. I've, I've noticed since it came out, there have been a lot of theories. Well, between it and A Wrinkle in Time, mm-hmm. that there have been all these uh, people talking about how he basically has transplanted the world of A Wrinkle in Time into, the, into a lot of his own novels, including The Dark Tower and It and so on. Have you heard anything about this? Because I... I don't know. I, I like. I looked at the. I looked at the. This seems like a silly theory to me, because it, I actually looked at it and I was like, "Oh, this almost sounded right," and then did not. I think it's silly because Dark Tower. I mean, if anyone isn't familiar with the Dark Tower series, it's basically Stephen King's giant magnum opus that explains his whole works hmm. and his and, life and his beliefs and everything. And I, I'm gonna try to be as fair as I can about it, having only read the first book. But oh no, it gets I, much better. Yeah, I, I, it's a. Uh, it's not easy to get into the first the first it. the first book is a little dry it's a little dry not not just a little dry yeah, I it's, mean, it's very dry it's really really i think hard i i struggled to get through it i was so bored it's a slog but granted he was a very young kid he wrote this in the 70s uh mm. who was still probably doing a lot of cocaine um <laughs> i feel like cocaine should have made that novel yeah, better but yes um it gets it, the series gets better basically it involves a the idea that every piece of fiction is a different universe and so it even references his own works including him who's he is a character in his own book um so the idea of being able to incorporate another series like wizard of oz is it it happens so the likelihood of it wizard uh, of oz yeah they're characters from i mean he he incorporates characters from different franchises into his books because oh. i mean there are definitely like similarities between how wrinkle and time works and and uh i guess other, or other elements of his stories but it's all stuff that i could say I mean, if you look at how Wrinkle in Time was derived and how it works, it's like, okay, well, if you just base it, you know, with things that he's written a lot of stuff in, you know, similar time frames. Mm. And if you're looking at, if, you, if you're ta- talking about how, like, multiple dimensions could work or time travel or anything like that, um, and you're operating on the best scientific theories that are available, which are, you know, at, at are not necessarily accurate because we don't know. We're mm. just trying to figure it out. Um, you know, of course, some of that stuff is going to line up a lot. It's the same way with, I can't remember the specifics of it, but there's that whole thing that, uh, you can find, you can find like clues, uh, uh, stuff from Shakespeare plays in the Bible or whatever, like point to stuff in the Bible. And it's just like human language repeats itself. It, yeah. like, if you look at the patterns of human language, it's very obvious how that happens, but yeah. it, it seems really cool. Like, oh my God, how is that even possible? But it's possible if you look at how boring our word choices are and how predictable yeah. they are i mean i would say it's possibly could be influenced by it but it, i don't think he's actually folded a wrinkle of time in i think people yeah just it's not intentional to... yeah for sure i mean i think at best it's it, you know in his drug days it kind of just filtered in and he didn't realize it i mean it's, it's very clear stephen king is a very avid reader uh he mm-hmm. consumes a lot of content and material which i really respect because he's he's an avid consumer mm-hmm. of, cre- of work as well as a creator of work yeah I mean, and his on writing is one of the best books on writing um, so he, I think probably, yeah, I think he's will be influenced by it. Yeah. And he, and it's like, you can't not be, we're mimics. We just pick yeah. up yeah, whatever we, we see yeah, and we don't work in a vacuum. Yeah. And like, I, I'm sure I incorporate elements into things that I do all the time that I've seen or read or whatever. And I don't, I just don't realize it. Yeah. I mean, there's certain sci-fi tropes even, or, um, fantasy tropes that just happen to be common parlance that have some origin somewhere. They didn't just originate from pop out of nowhere so mm-hmm. yeah you, i could see it being part of folded in yeah well that's a, not where i expected to wrap it up then. neither did i but uh interesting that we got there um i wish i, I could go into wrinkle in time yeah i feel like that uh, that would be a, a fun a fun world to explore at the same time i have not been eager to see the movie because it's not supposed to be very good uh, it's a mess. I would. Oh, do you see it? Yeah, it's a mess. Oh, that's too bad. I was. I was kind of hoping you'd be like, it's no, very, no, it's it's actually all right. It's very pretty. Yeah, it's just, I'm just tired of these sci-fi movies that try to be spectacles rather than actually say something, especially when they have source material that would allow them to tell a pretty good story. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I guess we have uh, Annihilation, which I'm seeing tomorrow. I liked Annihilation a lot. I've uh, I've heard wonderful things. I like the director. Oh, Garland is amazing. Ex Machina was wonderful. I'm glad Oscar Isaac is back in that film. I'm really looking forward to this. Richard read the book and hated it, but um, I don't know if that's the book's fault. No. Uh, well, also, this is not really based on the book. 
Oh yeah, it's yeah. I think he he read it. it sounded like it wasn't he, about. It wasn't that close to the book. He said he read the book once and wrote the script from memory as if this was like a fever dream. So oh. he didn't really adapt it so much as he basically heard a guy at a bar tell him the plot, and then he wrote the script. I think Richard found the book annoying because it was just a lot of dry science or something, and he liked the idea, but then he didn't enjoy reading it. I I may be completely getting that wrong, but um, but I but I mean that it, I I don't want to shit on the book, but. I so because I haven't read it but um apparently it's not like it Richard didn't like it but I don't think he didn't like the book because of the book it just was not his kind of book a little little but it sounds like it's not very entertaining if that's what you're going for I liked the movie I thought visually it's really creepy Mm -hmm. very haunting and there's just a lot of really powerful like interesting moments that will lurk with me for a long time so Alex Garland did a great job um ending is a little bit of bleak but we'll discuss that yeah we can talk about it next week um also thoroughbreds that was pretty i like that a lot i'm not I'm, pretty good they're not pretty it's not a pretty movie necessarily oh, yeah no i'm excited to see that anton yelchin's final film r.i.p yeah i i he was anton. in there i was like but he died like a while ago how mm-hmm. long ago was this made but then i thought about it and i was like okay this is a this is a movie that uh probably had trouble getting released well, considering what it, it's about it, it was at sundance last year and it did really mm-hmm. well and so it got picked up for release this year so it's just a slow release cycle yeah yeah it's um but I mean, he wasn't alive last year. He was not. So it was completed, sent to Sundance, then picked up, mm-hmm. and then delayed to be released. Yeah, I, I mean, it had to have been made like four years ago. I would think for it to three years to ago, fit. I believe. Oh, well, I guess it was like right before he died. Yeah. Oh, maybe this was the one he was. Fi- it he was had just finished filming. Yeah, it was his final film. Okay, I remember hearing something about. A, okay, but no, this all makes sense. Anyway, yeah, that that. that of all the deaths that can happen, that has got to be... What, he got crushed in between a mailbox and a car or his, something? I believe his gate, like security gate. Oh, yeah. He got out to close or grab something and the, the car rolled forward. It's so and bizarre. Him. And he's he talented. And, I yeah. mean, I don't I don't like to cry over celebrities more than anyone else, although I don't seem to be affected by anyone no, dying. I mean, he was... A, but, I think when you die at a, an old age, that's one thing. But when you die young and unexpectedly in a freak yeah. accident... Yeah. And yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just like sad on a human level yeah completely um especially with a young person who didn't have as much time not that it's not sad with older people but it's you yeah know, they had their they had their years they at least got to like get some more time in and realize that life isn't amazing all the time so you know i, I you can be a little bit more okay with death when you haven't suffered as much like or when you've suffered more i guess also if you're sick and like dying of what most old people die with like with that you almost have time to prepare and kind of like get your stuff in order whereas when you die suddenly and plus people around you are starting to prepare yeah when you die suddenly that's that's it's hard yeah for everyone else i mean it's probably hard for you but you're not here anymore so like if i if i knew i was terminal i would make a lot of things to make sure my cats are cared for i'd make sure that my places and everything was in order that my you know i I would make sure everything was in order to make it easier on those you know who are around me versus if i die suddenly i would feel awful like in those dying moments because i'm like shit i there's a lot of shit they got to do mm-hmm like that's yeah. like probably actually one of my biggest fears is is in my dying moments if something happens, hoping that someone would take care would take care of my cats and they won't be long before they find. Yeah, I'm not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of not finishing the work I'm doing that's before fair. I'm dead. Yeah. I want to make sure that I have. I, I I think about I, no way comparing myself to Einstein here. Just FYI. But, Are you going to disprove relativity? Well, it, we, you don't want to go into that when we're trying to end <laughs> yeah, the show. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, I, I don't disagree with relativity, but there, I mean, parts of it have been disproven. Um, or I should say we're not as accurate as they could be. And I would love to go into um, new Newtonian physics and all of that, but we do not have time for that. Um, anyway, the, uh, uh, he, he had, when he died, he was, I mean, he could have had a surgery that might have prolonged his life, but he was like, no, nope, I'm good. I made my contribution. I'm ready to go. Um, I want to. I want to feel like that. I want to. I want to feel fair. like I did. I did something. I'm. It's okay if I die. I'm going to keep trying. But I, you know, I finished enough that I contributed something good to society. And it's and me dying is not going to. You know, I, I did my part and I can go. Mm-hmm. Um, that that's just where I want to be at. But it doesn't scare me because I. I the, the thing that maybe would scare me at all is just that I don't want to feel the pain of what it might involve. Um, but other than that, uh, it's like, I'm not going to give a shit once I'm dead. So yeah. it's not like, what is, what is there to be scared of? It's, I just won't exist anymore. So it's not going to matter. Um, and then, I mean, unless, unless I'm wrong and there is a hell, which I'm <laughs> definitely going to, if there is, but there, yeah, well, I don't know. 
I mean, I'm definitely going to in the Christian hell. Yeah, same here. But, uh, but I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if being gay like is enough. If like, I, 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 th- I try pretty hard to do right by people, so I'm hoping that maybe ticks things up in my favor, but I also don't believe any of it, so it's not like it really matters. Well, I think um, not believing in it makes you go to hell by default. Yeah, that's probably a, a mark against me as well. I don't know. I, I, it's not really that important for me to figure that out, but... I don't think I'm going to exist. That seems the most likely to me based on what we know. And it's, uh, you know, yeah, it's, a, and like, I'm, it might suck for a minute, but I'm not going to care. I've mm-hmm. suffered for longer times and lived to remember it. So I can't imagine it's going to be the worst thing ever. Um, so, you know, I, I just don't, I don't think death is really anything to be afraid of. I just really want to make sure that. I, I did what I could to help people to contribute to society so the world's better uh, because I was here and not worse. And I think a lot of people can't say that, but could if they tried, and we should all really be striving for that. So with that, I think we should just end there because that's a positive thing to end on, <laughs> given that a lot of this was a downer. Yeah. Um, so help people. Do your part for society. You and, can still be selfish and do that. And so, don't be afraid of death. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's coming for us all. It is. And it's okay. Eventually it will get all of us. Mm-hmm. Bye. Have a good night. Or day, or whatever time you listen to this. Thanks for listening to this episode of Supercharged. If you'd like to send in a comment or a question, you can do so on awkward.email. You just go on your web browser to awkward.email. It's actually a website. And you can call or text 509-AWKWARD instead if you'd like to just skip all of that and do it from your phone. Also, if you'd like to check out some of our other shows, we've got a lot of great shows now and we're having more every day or, you know, eventually. You can do that on awkwardhuman.com slash podcast. Go check it out. We've got a lot of good stuff and we hope that you'll be listening every week. Thanks.